Hello everyone, Ashley Norman here. I wanted to get on and give you a teach back of everything I learned recently attending the one and only original creator of AirTouch, Vladimir Sarbashev, his class in Los Angeles, California, level one. Now this is going to be not even level one, this is going to be a 0.25 of the actual lecture here. So there is four different levels with AirTouch that you can take his continuing edu education. The first one is the introductory level, which I'm telling you, even the introductory level is mind blowing. Level two, level three, and then level four is when you actually have the ability to teach it back to him and then be certified to be an educator in the technique. So that being said, this is going to be a very micro-sized version or a 0.25 of the level one lecture. So just a mini teach back. I'm really excited though, because honestly in this world, in today's age, it's really hard to find somebody who has original ideas. And when I tell you this guy is the next Vidal Sassoon in terms of an original idea that is going to change the industry, I'm not exaggerating. And it's no coincidence that their initials are VS, Vidal Sassoon, Vladimir Sarbashev, same thing, right? Okay, so Vidal Sassoon created the precision haircutting method that pretty much every education system is now based off of. He was the first one to take architecture and put it into cutting so that there was a system that was reliable, a method that anyone could be taught and repeat and have the same results over and over and over again. Now, Vladimir has done the same exact thing only with the method of highlighting with air, okay? so. We're gonna start the lecture by breaking down blonding terminology in terms of standard techniques. Okay, so the first blonding terminology that we are familiar with is called global blonding, okay? So what is global blonde? Basically, global blonde is what I would consider to be a single process color, right? So it's a wide out, leaving no dimension. It's a way that we create what we consider platinum, right? Okay, so global blonde would be our first technique and definition. Next we would have highlighting. <laughs> okay, so the dictionary definition of highlighting is to create an area of accent. All right, so for example, when we are studying in school and we read books, we might take a highlighter and highlight a quote. So for example, one of my favorite quotes of my class with Vladimir was, first work for your name and then your name works for you. So I went ahead and highlighted that quote. So you see it created an area of accent draws the eye. Now, if I highlighted every single word on this page, then of course there wouldn't be an area of accent. Nothing would pop out because the whole thing would be highlighted, right? So that would be the global blonde when everything is whited out, no dimension, okay? So essentially what I'm saying here is if you want to create a highlight, right, you need to leave areas of dark. So in other words, in order to have an accent of light, you have to leave dark. Make sense? Duh, right? Okay. Now, this is what we consider creating contrast in the hair, was creating areas of light and dark for contrast. The method of separating for a traditional highlight was done by physically weaving the hair. So when you're weaving through the hair, you're deciding what hairs to lighten and what hairs to leave dark, right? Okay, so now the problem with weaving through hair is that hair is naturally denser at the scalp because hair is gonna break down either through the natural growth cycle or breakage, so which means the ends are actually thinner or less dense than the root area. So if we highlight evenly from roots to ends, 
automatically what's gonna happen is the root area is gonna be blonder and the ends are gonna be darker and dingier. So let me show you, for example, what I mean by this on a mannequin. So if we take a slice and evenly weave the slice, so this is the method of highlight is weaving and deciding which hairs to lighten and which hairs to leave dark. So this is a traditional method of highlighting. I'm weaving these to lighten and I'm weaving these out to leave dark to create contrast or dimension. Then if I highlight this inside of a foil, applying the lightener evenly from roots to ends, You can already see the hair is much thicker at the root and thinner towards the ends because naturally hair is more dense at the natural regrowth than it breaks down from breakage and or loss of hair during the natural growth cycle. So a traditional highlight is always going to be blonder at the scalp and not as light toward the mid lengths and the ends, which is typically the opposite of what we're trying to create if we're going for a natural rooted look. Okay, so let's move on to our third term. So, so far we've got global blonde. Next we have the method of highlighting or weaving, and now we have the method of ombre. So what is ombre? The definition of ombre is fade from dark to light, creating gradients or graduation of color. Typically, this is done by teasing or backcombing the hair. So if we take a section of hair and we backcomb or tease and then use a foil and lighten the ends, you have this diffusion up here that breaks up that line of demarcation to create a seamless blend or fade from dark to light. So we have global blonde, highlighting, ombre. Now what's next? We also have something that we like to call balayage. Now balayage is a French word. It means to sweep or to sweep away, to create movement with color. So balayage is actually a surface painting technique that is done on a triangular section. It has a built-in pocket of depth for the dimension and a buildup of blonde through the mid lengths and the ends fully blonde through the end sections. So it's an increase in saturation to create gradients or a fade from dark to light with a built in low light. So what we essentially are seeing here is a chocolate and vanilla swirl effect, especially when the section is curled. If we take a triangular section, paint on the top surface of that section while leaving an internal pocket of depth underneath it in the zones one and two, then only pull through all the way on the zone three or the ends. Then when you curl it, 
you have that underbelly of depth that pops out, creating a chocolate and vanilla swirl of dimension with an ombre end. So we have our method of global blonding, blonding all the hairs. We have our method of highlighting or weaving. Then we have our method of teasing. And now we have our method of surface painting open air. Next, we have our method of foilage. Foilage is a word that we made up, right? It's the word foil in front of the word balayage. Basically, all you're doing is creating a balayage effect inside of foil to maximize lift in one session. I would say the most common method to create this look is a combination of highlight and ombre. So you could almost think of the highlight as your X axis going vertical. And then you could think of your ombre or graduation of color as your Y axis. So you've got horizontal gradients with vertical highlight to create the effect of balayage inside of foil, foilage. Okay, now comes the next evolution of highlighting techniques, which is, drum roll please, air touch. <laughs> Let's dive in guys. I have a lot to say. <laughs> All right, so air touch is the next level of blonding techniques. All right, friends, it is the new evolution. All right, it is a method of separating hair for highlighting to create contrast without the need for weaving or teasing hair. It creates the most organic results and it is the easiest to retouch without overlapping previously hided hair and therefore leaving hair the healthiest. You're basically using wind or air movement to push away the shorter internal hairs in order to blonde the hairs that have seen the most summers, AKA a sun-kissed effect. Now there was this brilliant metaphor that Vladimir came up with, which to me made a ton of sense. So the metaphor goes like this. Hair is like a forest, okay? <laughs> so bear with me. Now, like we said earlier, due to the follicle growth cycle and breakage, our hair is not all the same length, okay? So hair has an infinite number of lengths, of course, right? But in order to simplify the process of separation, we are going to break it down into centrally three separate lengths, okay? So air touch typically refers to three length measurements or layers, okay? So in the metaphor of the forest, the three layers of the forest are the trees, the bushes, and the grass. Obviously the trees are the longest hairs, the bushes are the mid-length hairs, and the grass are the shortest hairs the floor of the forest representing our scalp, right? So now this is a simplification. Again, we have infinite numbers of lengths of hair throughout our hair head, but we're simplifying into three length measurements or three layers, all right? So the objective is to blow away the grass and or the bushes to leave dimension while blonding the trees to create organic contrast, okay? So again, 
we're trying to blonde the hairs that have seen the most summers, okay? So just like the trees are at the top of the canopy and the sun is hitting the trees first and then maybe filtering down a little bit to the bushes, maybe barely touching the grass, right? So naturally, of course, the trees are the tallest and so they're seeing the most sun and should be the lightest color. Same thing with our hair, right? Our hair naturally is blonder towards the tips because those are the hairs that are the oldest hairs that have seen the most summer. So we're trying to create organic sun-kissed effect. Got it so far? <laughs> Here we have a slice. Now if we look at this slice and we think here is the full length of the section, here's about one third of the section, and here's the two thirds of the section. So maybe we could think of the hair as the grass lives within the first third, then the bushes live within the second two thirds, and then the trees are all the way through the full section, right? So let's try and blow out the grass first at one third of the section. We're gonna hold the section out 90 degrees from the scalp, pinch with two fingers flat like a ribbon at the one third mark, and then slide slightly past to release the hairs within that grass area. This represents the grass hair. Okay, so now that I've blown out the hair from about one third of the section representing the grass hair, I'm going to now blow out the bushes <laughs> by moving my fingers down to about two thirds of the hair strand and then slightly past to release those hairs at the two third mark. So now you should be able to see all three layers. We have the grass hairs, the bushes hairs, and the trees. One, two, three. Okay, another brilliant thing that Vladimir does is he creates these formulation keys. These formulation keys are fantastic for writing out your formulas and communicating them. Maybe if you're working with an assistant to help you mix color or you're keeping records for yourself personally. So when the client comes back in, you know what you used on them last time. All right, so if we have our trees, bushes and grass, that's what those triangles represent, okay? So number one here is going to be the longest hairs, which is our trees. The number two here is going to be the bushes, which is the mid-length strands. And then number three is the shortest hairs or the grass, okay? So your key here is one, two, and three. So your trees will be your highlight, your bushes are gonna be your low light, and the grass area is gonna be your base color, okay? So one, two, three here, highlight, low light, base color. 
Here's an example of a formulation. Let's say, for example, she has a natural regrowth and previously highlighted hair. So in the number one, which is our highlight, we would want to use lightener at the scalp. So our 1A formula would be lightener, but we wanted to preserve the mid lengths and the ends inside the foil. So we isolate that formula 1B is just basically conditioner. So inside of one foil packet, you've got lightener at the regrowth and you've got conditioner isolating the previously highlighted hair. So formula A, 1A, and formula 1B is inside of one foil, okay? Then we have our formulas in the low light area, so 2A and 2B. Let's say you want your low light to fade from dark to light, right? You wanna create gradients in the mid-length hair. So in this case, maybe at the root, the 2A formula is 7NB, and then you fade that or melt that into your 2B formula, which is maybe an eight gold to fill back. Then let's say you need to do a base color in your grass, right? So your formula three, let's say it's a 5NB, maybe even has some gray coverage, who knows? All right, so this would be an example of how you would write out your formula in the three layers. Brilliant, right? Sectioning. Let's talk sections. Now, this is a whole nother thing because each one of these is a full on pattern that is masterminded out to perfection. And this is what you would learn if you took the stage one class is these first five patterns, okay? So these are the main section patterns and they have a central shape. And from that central shape, the, the rest of the sections are broken down, okay? So the square, for example, is going to be your max blonde pattern. This is good for cuts that have layers, disconnections, or fringes, okay? Then you have a horseshoe pattern. This is gonna create a dimensional blonde. It is the most versatile pattern. He also had a triangle pattern that creates a contour effect for a bold face frame while leaving dimension in the crown. Now this one, <laughs> the rhombus. Now, to me, this is a diamond. <laughs> Fun fact, I actually had to Google this. What is the difference between a rhombus and a diamond? Okay, well, depends on how you look at it. Technically, from an American standpoint, a diamond is, or a rhombus is a type of diamond. So basically a rhombus just means that all four sides are equivalent. So diamonds can be different shapes and the sides can be different lengths. In the case of the rhombus, all the lengths in this diamond are equivalent, okay? So the rhombus or type of diamond pattern is the simplest parting. It's also great for warm colors and intermixing with balayage, kind of feather painted techniques inside a foil, okay? Lastly is the pentagon, which is gonna create what I consider to be a sombre effect. Sombre is a balayage into a solid ombre all ends blonde, okay? So this is probably gonna be the most classic look that you're gonna see, probably my hair, right? So you could probably say that my ends are all blonde, so it is dimension into a solid platinum at the bottom. So if you look at a lot of pictures that you see the hashtag air touch on, they're probably gonna look something like this Pentagon pattern. You'll have to take the class to really know exactly what these patterns are, but let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the subsections that are within these main sections. Subsections. This is basic theory, okay? So within the main sections, there's subsections, you've got 
horizontal sections. Now horizontal to natural fall is going to give you maximum impact or sheets of color. If you're using vertical sections, vertical to natural fall, you're going to get minimum impact or a pinstripe. A diagonal back section, meaning the diagonals are pointing back away from the face, is going to give you the most organic effect. Now, these three are the ones that I knew about personally. This one was new for me. So diagonal forward sections, meaning that the diagonal is leaning towards the face, is also an option for a color pattern. Typically, I would use a diagonal forward sectioning to create a A-line or triangular bob, but I've never used diagonal forward section for highlighting, and now I'm gonna try it. So basically, it's still gonna be organic, like your diagonal back, only it is gonna be more impact because you're kind of working opposite to natural fall. So it is gonna be somewhere in between your vertical and your horizontal when you're using your diagonal forward. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about section size and foil folding, okay? This is really important. When it comes to air touch, because there is no reliance on a root shadow, so the goal being not having to cover up any mistakes at the root with a darker formula in your toner, means the root area has to be perfect. So if you're going to saturate all the way to the edge of the foil, but not past, because you're not trying to create a bleed mark either, all the foils have to sit perfectly on the head. There can't be gaps or spots, okay? Which means your section size cannot be wider than your foil, okay? This is crucial, number one. Number two, your foil folding pattern has to match the width of the section. So you can kind of see how this section kind of wraps organically around the nape area. And these first foils in here are gonna be folded triangularly. But then once you get to the narrow part of the section, you have to start folding like a, tra a trapeze, okay? Or a trapezoid, okay? The last little foil right here you can see has to be folded into a triangle. The reason you have to fold to follow the section is because when you get to the section above, if this isn't folded properly to match, then these foils are now going to be in the way of your next section, okay? So you have to make sure that you're folding the foil to follow the section width in order to not be in the way of the next section above. Good talk? All right. This is something else I learned, uh, especially during hands-on, because when we were folding, we were doing two folds and then a lock. And the question that I had, and in fact a lot of students had, was why would you fold, fold, and then lock? Why wouldn't you just put another foil on top and sandwich the two foils together? Reasonable question. The interesting answer that I got from Vladimir himself was he said, the more you fold the foils, it's almost like layering blankets. So the more folds you have, it's like more blankets on top of the hair to keep in and incubate the bleach. So it's almost like the tighter the foil folding, the more incubated the bleach is, which means you're going to get stronger lift. But you can't fold the foils too tight because if you do, you're gonna start getting creases, right? So if you crease the foil too tight, you could potentially push some of the bleach out of that area and leave creases in the highlight section and even maybe create uh, the folding, creates kind of like a puffiness in the bleach, which, which is also a really bad thing. So you wanna fold the foils up to create more incubation and more lift, but not too tightly in order 
to crease and potentially push your bleach and create marks, okay? So there's some technique to that. All right, friends, now, I see this a lot on Instagram, right? People think, and I thought, that air touch is, you know, you just blow the hair, right? You just blow it, and then you highlight what's left, right? <laughs> I mean, I guess that's as easy as saying, like, oh, yeah, you just weave the hair. Oh, you just tease it. Like, it's not that simple, right? <laughs> it's really not. So what makes a great highlight or what makes a great ombre, a great balayage, right, or a great air touch? What it comes down to is control and balance for consistency, okay? What's the difference between a good hairdresser and a great hairdresser? Consistency. So we're not robots, right? Like some days we have good days, some days we have bad days. But people don't want to come to their hairdresser and sometimes get a good job and sometimes not. <laughs> So that's the hardest thing, right? And for example, same thing goes for a restaurant. We might go to a restaurant that's mediocre, but we go there because we know what we're gonna get. Like when I was traveling to other countries and island hopping, for example, in third world countries, I typically was happy to eat at McDonald's, not because McDonald's has the best food in the world and is a great restaurant, but because McDonald's is consistent and I know what I'm gonna get, right? <laughs> okay, so you need to practice the technique in order to have control and balance for consistency in the results as well as for tomorrow's retouch, okay? So you need consistency not only for today's results, but also for tomorrow's retouch. So how hard is it, not just to do a great job the first time, but then the next time they come in, pick up the same exact hairs and only retouch at the root area in order to avoid overlapping on previously hidden lighted hair and creating breakage. That's the hardest thing. So if you have the control in the application to create the balance, you're able to repeat it the next time, the retouch will also be more accurate and then that would create more long-term health in your client's hair. Two common mistakes. Now these are the two mistakes I personally made during hands-on, so I'd like to share. <laughs> because I feel like these are gonna be the most common mistakes as well. Number one, one of the most common mistakes is inconsistency on the amount of hair that you blow out, okay? So inconsistency of the blowout of dimension is gonna equal irregular gradients or uneven ombre. So what I mean by that is sometimes I was like blowing out just the grass. <laughs> sometimes I was blowing out the bushes, and sometimes I was blowing something out in between, okay? So what happened was my gradients was going like this, kind of all over the place. It wasn't fading evenly from dark to light, so my ombre was uneven, okay? So you have to decide how much dimension you're gonna blow out and then be consistent with that blowout every single section. Because if you're sometimes blowing out more, sometimes blowing out less, the whole graduation of color is gonna be completely off. Again, you don't have control of the technique, you're blowing out the wrong amount different times, and therefore your balance is off, your consistency of result is off, your consistency of your retouch is definitely gonna be off, all right? Second common mistake, inconsistency in your section size. I also made this mistake, okay? So section size matters because if you don't have consistent sections, 
you're going to have irregular highlight and uneven dimension. So there was some patterns in which you actually skip sections to leave more dimension than just the hairs you blow out. I was skipping larger sections and then skipping skinnier sections and then highlighting thicker sections and then highlighting thinner sections. So I had uneven highlight and irregular dimension. It was bad news, okay? Again, <laughs> if your section size is inconsistent, then you do not have control of the technique and therefore your results will be unbalanced and your retouch will be more difficult, okay? So it's not so simple. It takes a lot of practice and I'm starting from the bottom. So I will be right there with you, friends. <laughs> this brings us to our conclusion. Now these are my top three reasons for recommending learning and mastering air touch. Number one, it's going to be your most organic results. When I tell you friends, these live models at the LA class, their hair looked like toddler hair. I mean, I have toddlers, okay? I have a four-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a five-month-old. So when you look at hair that's highlighted naturally in kids, you know what I'm talking about, okay? My daughter, her four-year-old highlights are incredible, right? Nature, mother nature is the best colorist. <laughs> so she is a natural honey wheat blonde with just oh, all the different dimensions, right? And when I tell you these models walked out with freaking four-year-old toddler perfection hair, it was beautiful, okay? Me personally, look at this. Look at my hair. I haven't had my hair touched up for four months and the regrowth is freaking flawless. Like, I can't even tell you. This is, normally I can't go this long. This is crazy. The way this is growing out of my head is nuts, all right? So the most organic results, number one. Number two, there is no need for a root shadow. Now this is crazy to me, right? Because there's a saying, it's the saying goes, touch it once. If you've ever heard that term, touch it once. What that means is if you're gonna do something, just get it right the first time. Don't do something sloppy and then go, have, go in and have to like do something a second time. So it's kind of like this idea of like, hey, get it right and then it's done. And so I love this idea of your work is so flawless to the scalp, to the root, that you don't need to go in and use a darker formula during your glossing at the scalp to cover up mistakes or to create the gradients because you didn't create the gradients in the technique and you blotted too much thick hair at the root and not enough toward the mid lengths and the ends. Freaking brilliant. It's gonna save you time it's also gonna save you product. And that's gonna cut our costs of doing business, which we can either pass on to the customer and or put into our pocket. Probably both, okay? My third top reason for recommending learning air touch is going to be healthiest retouch, okay? This one's a kicker because yes, you can do great highlights the first time, them coming in and being able to repeat that same pattern and not overlap and therefore cause breakage is the hard part, okay? The fact that the patterns are worked out down to the last section and the way that the balance and the control of how much you blow out and your section size, all those things combine makes it so once you have this down, you can go back and retouch and have zero issues with overlap, which means over time, 
your client's hair is going to be so much healthier. All right, friends, there is a lot more that I could say. I haven't even gotten to the relationship of haircut and the air, air touch highlighting technique, which is something that I hope to be exploring more with Vladimir himself. But really this is exciting because again, when is there original ideas floating around in this industry? It is so hard. Not only that, it's important to continue your education because you want to challenge yourself to stay inspired. The minute you feel like you already know everything is the minute you start getting lazy and you start doing the things that you thought you know how to do sloppily and now you don't even do what you do well. And that's kind of even has happened to me. So I love the fact that this is something that has made me feel challenged for the first time in a really long time and there's so much to explore that it's gonna take me a decade to master. And that's exciting because I love learning and I love the idea of the potential for progression. There's nothing worse than having a stagnant career. And now that I feel like I've got something to look forward to learning and some progression to build, it's something I'm excited to continue on this journey, learning air touch. So hopefully you enjoyed this short 0.25 teach back lecture. <laughs> Stay tuned for more.